Let's take a look at burning audio CDs from within WaveLab 8. While many programs burn audio CDs, many of them don't solve the typical problems encountered during the process of preparing your audio for CD delivery. Let's take a look at how WaveLab can solve some of these issues. The basic audio CD window can be opened by looking at this icon right here at the very top on the series of vertical icons. I click there and our basic audio CD window opens where our master section was. The master section is still active, but we can just toggle its visibility here by clicking on the tabs between the master section to the basic audio CD. Getting files into the CD list, there are several ways of doing that. I can drag my audio from my edit window. If I want to remove a file, I could click on it with the X tool. Or if I wanted to take a portion of the audio file and drag that over, this will automatically insert my CD start and end markers. From within my basic audio CD window, go to my file menu and choose add tracks and double click. The file will be added. Or from my file browser, I can just select my different files. and just drag those files down. To change the order of the CDs, drag and drop. If I wanted to adjust the pause times between different CD tracks, I can click on this little icon, this triangular icon to the left of the CD track name. This would show me my CD track and start time plus my pause times. So I'm gonna scroll over to the right. And let's say for this project, I wanted to insert zero seconds of pause between each track. You could put whatever value you want or set a kind of a default value that's different than two seconds. We'll show you that in just a minute. If I wanted to listen to each of the songs, I could click on it and hit the space bar. If I find that I want to edit a file and don't want to hunt throughout the hard drive to edit it, I can click on this little icon here and that would open up that file in the sample editor. So if I wanted to, for instance, do a different fade in, I could go to my process and I'll choose easy fade. And now we can just change that particular file. My settings area here would allow me to enter in my UPC EAN code. I could also set my default pause times. And if I'm ready to burn the CD, I may want to check to see if there's any errors with how the CD is being laid out. And I could click here right on a CD conformity. That all looks good. So if I'm ready to burn the CD, I click on this icon right here and I could burn directly to an audio CD that's inserted in a drive, or I could create a DDP image or disk description protocol. And this is often what is sent to a duplication facility. Um, so you don't have to send over your audio CD. This is all the data that's used to uh, make that audio CD directly there. Now at times you may want to see a more of how the CD will be laid out. And this is where the montage editor comes in very handy. So I'm gonna click this icon. It's gonna take this list, my CD list here, and actually convert that into a new audio montage. And as we do this, we may notice that, okay, we can now see all of our tracks laid out. If I wanted to adjust the pause times between my CD tracks, I can just move them. If I wanted to uh, take that clip here and make this song louder or softer or if I wanted to change a point to make this whole CD track kind of get loud and fade up or fade down we can adjust the volume or if I just wanted to do a long fade out at the end of the song and if I wanted to adjust that fade out I could right click and have that be more of a sinusoid fade out and we have our unlimited levels of undo here if I wanted to do crossfades, but still maintain my track start and end times of the CD, which is really handy for live recordings or classical music. Very easy to treat things, very object oriented. 
Now at times you may look at it in all the files in the montage and you may see that, okay, this one looks perhaps the left channel is a little louder than the right channel. We can actually edit these and toggle back and forth between our audio montage editor and our sample view. So if I click on my edit tab, I can now select edit audio and I could go to my process menu if I wanted to equalize the left and right channels and choose pan normalizer. And I could do it by the overall loudness or by peak levels. And now I'll have that consistency between the left and right channels. And to go back to my montage view, I could just click here between the CD list and the edit view right here, this icon. And now that will bring me back into my montage view. Now, consistency can be very tough within doing your own audio CDs, especially sonically to make sure the tracks sound like they're all coming from the same recording, but also levels. We could see here that we're probably going to have some level discrepancies between the tracks. And sometimes you don't want it always to be loud. Some people mistakenly think of mastering as making all your stuff loud, but it's often having a consistency between the CD. So I'm going to select this track right here, and I'm going to go to my tools menu and open up the loudness meta normalizer. And what I could do is I could actually set a particular loudness or I'm going to set it to match the focused clip. And what this will do is do an analysis of the loudness of each of the tracks and it's going to make it match the loudness of this particular track so that when I go from track to track. I'm just looking for tonight, but I think I'm So that way we can have consistency between tracks with volumes, which is really, really great time saver. Now, if we listen to tracks sometimes, you may go, I may need to apply effects just on a particular track on a CD. So if I select the, the song right here, the audio file, you'll see a little red area. And this would allow you to open up and add effects. So I could say, okay, I want to open up let's say my, um, a little bit of a vintage compressor and these plugins come directly with wave lab. So I can have my vintage compressor. So if I want to adjust compression just on that one track, or let's say if I wanted to add another plugin, what's really great is this handy design where if I click on this plus, I can open up additional plugins right here without necessarily having to open up multiple plugin interfaces and I could just tab back and forth. So I could have my master section plugins, but I could also have plugins that are dedicated specifically to individual clips or files or songs on my CD. Now one of the plugins that's really useful for kind of having consistency and then is the Voxengo Curve EQ. So let's say if I wanted to listen to this uh, file. We were doing things in our minds that would listen to this file you may notice that this one sounds a lot darker not as crisp or as brilliant as this file so I'm going to open up my Voxengo Curve EQ and again this comes bundled directly with WaveLab and what I want to do is on the mode right here is to choose average and then I'm going to play this particular audio file I'm going to click right here into my static and match and I'm going to play this file and what it's going to do is an analysis of all the frequencies of that file and once you kind of see it kind of settle in it can take just a couple of seconds okay so what I want to do now is click on take so this is the sound that I want to have and we're going to take the other file Wonder what she thinks about. And it's going to take like the EQ fingerprint of that particular file. You can see that the frequency curves are different, especially right around here. She missed a lot of my coming of age. And once this is settled down, we're going to click on take again. And what I want to do now is apply, use the first file as the reference and apply it to this file and match the frequency spectrum. So now, she wasn't there when I went to prom. and we bypass. If she would have joked my date about my first song. 
wonder if she's watching me. So now you can match up those different frequency curves. So if you have a favorite recording that you like and you really want to kind of to, uh, capture the sonic essence of it, the Voxango Curve EQ is a phenomenal tool for that. And again, that's included within WaveLab. Now we can do some additional metadata options right here. So if we go to our CD tab that's been created automatically, we can go to your functions. I can go to my CD wizard and here I could have it automatically do my UPC EAN code, some additional metadata with markers. I could generate my ISRC codes if I have that. Other functions, I can add my CD text. So if you want to put the artist's name, the performer, the songwriter, composer, all that metadata can be incorporated directly within the CD text. Some additional CD metadata can be applied directly to the files. Also, coming here, I could say, let's generate an audio CD report. So at this point, we could have it, uh, you could put a company logo as a graphic image. You could have it as an HTML or PDF file. So if you needed to come here, you could hit apply and then, or okay. And this would actually generate a report of all the start and end times of the CD. Some other very handy things is just listening to the beginning of each of the CD tracks or play the next CD track, the previous CD track. And then once you're all ready to go, write the audio CD or DDP image and have that consistency of sonically as well as levels so that your CD sounds better, sounds more homogenous, and sounds like a professionally mastered CD when using WaveLab 8.